Welcome back Artistic ladies and gentlemen to another Meta Monday episode in this PTCGO series. Meta Monday is that day of the week where we take a look at a competitive deck from the past or the present in a Pokemon TCG online meta and today for the first time ever in this series we are going to try to look into the future and guess which deck might possibly become a part of the meta however small and I'm going to hope that Genesect will at some point be a part of the meta because it is such a fun deck to play if I say so myself. If you want to skip to certain parts of this video use the timestamps on the left hand side of the screen or click the timestamps in the description and I completed a trade. <laughs> I've got no clue what I traded there. I thought I didn't have any trades up. Anyways this is a deck based around Genesect EX but Genesect EX is only one of the many attackers that you will find in this deck. This deck is sort of like a metal toolbox deck where Genesect plays the role of the main and the general purpose attacker, the versatile attacker that will be used for quite a few matchups. So that's why we are going to start off with Genesect X with its 180 hit points and the rapid blaster attack that can hit for 100 damage for 3 metal energies. We then get to choose if you want to discard any of these metal energies. If we do, we do 20 more damage for each metal energy discarded in that way. So if we discard 3 metal energies, we hit for 160. If we discard 4 metal energies, we actually hit for 180. Slap on a fighting free belt you hit for 170 and 190 respectively which is a knockout on any EX that is not a mega in the current format a one hit KO which is actually what we are after with Genesect EX uh, it's not too far-fetched uh, to be discarding four energies because we have a support Pokemon in this deck which is, which is going to allow us to power up Genesect EX with metal energies quite quickly Genesect also has the drive change ability allowing us to put a tool card attached to Genesect into our hand once during our turn so we could swap out the Fighting Fury Belt on the Genesect EX and replace it with a Float Stone then retreat the Genesect EX onto our bench and use the Metalinks from the Bronzong. This is the support Pokemon that I was talking about. Metalinks allows us uh, to attach Metal Energy cards from our discard pile to one of our benched Pokemon. This can then be a Genesect EX. So if we have hit for a rep blaster in our previous turn we can retreat the Genesect EX to our bench and power it up with Metal Links once again. If we have three Bronzongs in play we don't even need to attach from our hand we can just Metal Links all the energies onto our Genesect. A 3-3 line of Bronzong in this deck just because it is such an important Pokemon. Without it this deck would be literally nowhere. This deck would not be possible. I do quickly want to mention that mention that with the Fighting Fury Belt, uh, the Genesect gets 220 hit points, a whopping 220 hit points, and combined with the Psychic Resistance, that makes Genesect quite the tank against Night March and especially Pumpkaboo and Mew from Night March, because that would require the Night Marcher to dish out 240 damage if he wants to one-hit KOs, and that means the Night Marcher needs to discard 12 Night Marchers, which is all of the night marches in his deck and attack with Mew at the same time which is not very likely even for a deck as consistent as Night March. So typically Genesect EX will be able to take a hit from Night March without getting knocked out. I also run one Bronzong Break in addition to the Bronzong line. Bronzong Break with the Metal Rain, an attack which is actually quite similar to the Rapid Blaster from the Genesect EX in a sense that we also get to discard energies attached to Bronzong Break and we do 30 damage for each energy discarded in that way to a Pokemon of our choice on my opponent side of the field any Pokemon that we want. So if we have two energies attached to this Bronzong Break we can discard both of them and put 30 on a Joltik if you are facing Night March and 30 on another Joltik and knock out two Joltiks like that. If we are facing an opponent who plays Shaman we can actually uh, try to knock out a Shaman by attaching four energies to this Bronzong Break then hitting for the Metal Rain discarding all four and then we can put four times 30 is 120 damage on the Shaman on my opponent's bench and sneakily get a KO for two easy prizes that way. Uh, it's pretty easily to put four energies onto the Bronzong break as long as you've got some Bronzongs in play. So it is going to be uh, key to this deck to get those Bronzongs out and that's why I run uh, a Pokemon Fan Club very handy to get the Bronzongs out but also the other Pokemon and also two level balls which typically you will use at the start of the game to get out Bronzors uh, if you didn't have them in your hand already. 
Now, besides the general purpose attacker Genesect EX, there's also some matchup specific Pokemon in these decks, like the Registeel. Registeel will typically be used in uh, if you're facing decks which are focused around EXs because Registeel can hit for a Forbidden Iron Hammer for 70, slap on a Muscle Band, which I do run one copy of, then you're hitting for 90 damage, which is a 2 hit KO on most EXs, and you even get to discard an energy attached to the EX, uh, which can disrupt their strategy quite a bit. You could actually replace this Registeel with Dialga from the Phantom Forces expansion. Uh, Dialga has an attack which prevents any damage done to it by the defending Pokemon if that Pokemon is an EX. I went with Registeel because unlike Dialga, Registeel doesn't give up two prizes when it's knocked out. Then if you are facing uh, special energy decks or decks that rely on special energies, we will want to go with Aegis Slash EX. Get that Aegis Slash EX in the active spot with its mighty shield ability preventing any damage done to it by Pokemon that have special energy attached to it. And that is going to be extremely useful if you are facing Vespaqueen Vileplume. Vespaqueen Vileplume typically doesn't run VS Seekers and very few Hex Maniacs, if any at all. So if he can get that Aegis Slash X into the Axis spot without benching too many other Pokemon, uh, you have basically auto won the game. Your opponent is going to concede, which all also happens to me during testing. And that's one of the reasons why Aegis Slash X in, is in his deck. It's also a pretty good attacker with the Slash Blast there. And then finally, we've got a Seismitoad EX. Another counter against Night March. Uh, so we've already got the tanky Genesect EX, which can take a hit. We've got Bronzong Break, which can snipe, which can snipe Joltix. And then we've got Seismitoad, which item locks Night Marchers. The Quaking Punch hits for 30 and is easily, easily uh, powered up with our Bronzongs. If we are going first, we can attach an energy to Seismitoad EX, and then in our second turn, attach another energy and hit for that Quaking Punch to item lock our opponent. We can also search out the Seismitoad with Hoopa, or we can even search out a Aegis Slash EX if we are facing Vespa Queen, or we could search out the Genesect EX if we are facing a match where my opponent is playing both EXs and other basic Pokemon. Uh, so this Hoopa, very, very useful card here. Uh, I don't think the deck would function nearly as well if it wasn't in this deck. It's very important to search out our Pokemon, as well as these Shamans for draw support and that's it for the pokemon line let's have a look at the supporter line i already mentioned the pokemon fan club uh, you can use the pokemon fan club to get the hoopa and then hoopa for shaman uh, aegis slash and a genesect for example so very very strong supporter this pokemon fan club but mainly going to be used to get the bronzors as i mentioned then four sycamore for draw support and one n more sycamore than n because we want to discard energies metal energies get them in our discard pile to use them or to get them back with the metal links from our bronze on also two battle compressors for that very same reason and to compress some pokemon that we don't want to see if we are facing um a deck that doesn't run special energies we will compress our aegis slash ex for example uh, certain matchups we don't require registeel at all so we will want to compress it so we don't draw into it uh, when it's not useful then two listeners uh, i went with two listeners because if we can, we will want to license out Shaman and knock him out with our Genesect EX. Uh, with a Fighting Fury Belt, Genesect hits for 110 as the base, which is exactly enough to knock out a Shaman. Then one AZ. AZ is going to be used for two purposes. One to get rid of damage on, on our Genesect EX or on our Seismitoad. We don't care that we have to discard our energies. Uh, we will use our AZ and then use our uh, get back our energies using the Metal Links from the Bronzong. So very powerful use of the AZ. A second is just uh, to switch out Pokemon. Because all of our Pokemon are pretty heavy on the retreat cost. Two for Genesect, three for the Bronzong here, three for the Seismitoad, uh, three for the Aegis Slash EX as well, and three for the Registeel. So one possible tactic our opponent could try to pull off is a Lysander Stalus, uh, Lysander something in the active spot that doesn't have a Floatstone attached to it. And then this AZ is gonna come in handy to AZ up that Pokemon and uh, put a Pokemon in the active spot which we can attack with. That's also why there's two switches in this deck uh, for more switching power and the switches also work very nicely in combination with the flow stones here. For example, if we used a Genesect EX and discarded uh, three metal energies to it, we can then 
actually use our switch, switch it onto the bench, promote a bronze one with a flow stone attached to it, Metal Link's energy is back onto the Genesec EX, and then retreat this bronze one with a float stone on the to the bench and attack with the Genesec that we just powered up. That's a, a strategy which you actually want to pull off uh, most most of the games uh, with those switches. Uh, two trainers mail for consistency, one sacred ash to get back Pokemon from our discard pile. I don't run super odds because uh, we can get back metal energies from our discard pile pretty easily with the metal links. So uh, sacred ash it is. And if you are going to use this sacred ash, I would advise you to use it mostly for your bronzongs. Bronzongs will be a licensed target for your opponent uh, quite frequently, so you'll want to get them back with this Sacred Ash. And then for the end Seekers for consistency, uh, to get back our supporters for Ultra Balls, to search out our Pokemon and the Hoopa. One Hex Maniac uh, against against uh, Greninja Break, against Trevenant Break. Item Lock is not really a friend of ours, since we want to use our tools here and switch them out uh, onto the Genesec AX potentially. And that only leaves the stadiums. I went with two stadiums only, which is on the low side. It's a low count of stadiums. But I feel like this deck doesn't really need too many stadiums. Uh, two seems more than enough. I went with one Skyfield, since we do run out of bench pace um, at some point in the game. If we bench two Bronzongs, uh, one Shaman for draw support and one Hoopa, that only leaves us one spot for the active Pokemon and one spot on the bench, which is not too much. Uh, we could put down a Genesect, for example, and a Aegislash, but then we are done for. We cannot use another Shaman, so this Skyfield is gonna come in handy for us to bench some more Shaman, draw into some more cards, and then if our opponent counters the, uh, the Stadium, we'll get rid of our Shamans as well as the Hoopa that we benched earlier on. And finally, one Parallel City. You could easily replace this with a Skyfield uh, if you feel like you prefer the Skyfield, but I prefer having this parallel city just to make my opponent feel a little bit claustrophobic, have him deal with uh, only three spots on his bench uh, rather than the five that he typically has. Uh, this can help us to slow down our opponent a little bit if you are having a slow start for example. And that's it for the deck. So lots of lots to talk about with this deck because there's so many things you can do, there's so many interactions. Uh, I think I forgot to mention the megaphone but it's pretty self-explanatory. Leave a like if you enjoy the premise of this deck and if you enjoy the upcoming battles and let me know down below if you think Genesect EX can be viable. Alright, our first opponent is Krauser underscore DMC with a fighting deck. Very likely something Lucario or Garchomp like. Uh, he doesn't play any other Pokemon which is a little bit curious. But I think uh, Corina Engine can suffice for such a deck. Corina and Sycamore combined. Uh, we'll have to wait and see what exactly it is that my opponent is playing. Yeah, it's definitely fighting types and it might be Lucario Hammers actually. Because we see lots of, uh, lots of uh, energy discarding cards. Which we are not too scared of because we have our Bronzong breaks. Uh, our Bronzongs with the Metal Links. Uh, we start off with the Genesect. And not the best of hands, no draw support, lots of uh, tech support like the Lysander and the Hex Maniac. And it is Lucario. Uh, are we going to see a Gibble as well? Lucario and Garchomp. Uh, I kind of feel like going with Registeel here, try to find Registeel. Discards a Enhanced Hammer uh, using the Misty's Determination. And might go for another basic. Uh, actually, it just uh, attaches an energy, no other basic just yet. And a pass of the turn, wow. Not the best of turns for my opponent there, but we have a pretty terrible bad hand ourselves. And there is a Sycamore. Let's grab that Sycamore, let's discard this entire hand, uh, be done with it. We, we don't want to deal with this hand here. Lots of resources in the discard pile. And there is a Hoopa, as well as an Ultra Ball. We can grab a Shaman with that Ultra Ball. For now, I'm going to start powering up the Registeel. Or should I start powering up the Genesect? The Genesect can one hit KO this Lucario, possibly. But I'm gonna go with the Registeel for now. And then I'm gonna Hoopa, put down my Hoopa and grab a Shaman. Now let's have a look. Do we have a Sacred Ash? We do have a Sacred Ash. Uh, one more Bronzong. The other Bronzong is in our hands. Uh, let's grab a Shaman and possibly 
A Toad? No, the Toad is not very good against Lucario. Lucario hits the Toad too hard. We could go with an Egg Slash. Uh, we might see strong energy on the Lucario, so I think I will grab an Egg Slash. It's a pretty good attacker as well. And then we will grab another Genesect, which, uh, or the Toad actually, which we are going to discard using our Ultra Ball there. We'll discard that Toad. And we'll grab a Bronzor. Uh, let's discard the Toad and then also the Parallel City. I don't think it's going to be too useful here in this matchup. And we will grab one Bronzor. We need to get the Energy Acceleration going right now. We'll bench the Egg Slash. And then we'll also bench our Shaman. Hopefully we can find our Skyfield. I didn't really pay attention. Uh, didn't really see if it's in our deck or not. Uh, there is a Flowstone for our Genesect. Excellent. So we will end our turn here. In the next turn, we will have to pick up possibly our Shaman uh, to join some more cards. We need to get some energy in the discard pile here because we have none in the discard pile. Which has me worried a little bit. And there's a Bursting Balloon on that Lucario. Alright, he's going to hit us for 80 damage with the Core Screw Smash. Uh, that is quite a lot of damage right there. We might actually have to promote the Hoopa. <laughs> we get Pokemon Fan Club, that's not too useful for us. So I'm going to... I'm going to attach this to the Registeel, put a Flowstone on uh, the uh, Genesect. Uh, retreat this Genesect into the uh, Registeel, I think. Maybe I shouldn't do that because my opponent might be able to knock it out in the next turn. Yeah, I'm gonna retreat into the Hoopa instead. Uh, keep my Egg Slash fresh. I don't want any damage on it. And then I think it's time to pick up the Shaman with the AZ. We can always use that Flowstone, get it back from the Genesect and put it onto the Hoopa in the next turn. So I'm going to pick up the Shaman here. And then I'm going to attach this Muscle Band to my Registeel. And bench that Shaman once again, draw into some more cards. Can we find an Ultra Ball to discard an energy or maybe just a Battle Compressor? But we cannot, we cannot find it. I can actually get rid of this Floatstone. I will get it back into my hand and I'm going to attach a Fighting Fury Belt to the Genesect now. So if my opponent Lysanders it out, it should be able to stay alive. Uh, we will end our turn here. We drew into a bit of a terrible hand there. A little bit unfortunate that we drew into the hand that we did. There is another Lucario. So slowly but surely we are getting ourselves into the game here, but my opponent is definitely having a good time as well. There is a strong energy onto the other Lucario, so we can actually promote our Aegis Slash if my opponent promotes that Lucario. And we get another Genesect. We are not drawing into the hands that we want to draw into. Let's put that Flowstone onto the Hoopa, and we'll have to discard this entire hand. Uh, what do we get? We get a Startling Megaphone, excellent, and a Battle Compressor, which is what I was looking for. So we are going to Battle Compress one or two energies, maybe maybe one energy, because I think the Registeel might get knocked out in the next turn. We'll discard one energy. We only have one VS Seeker left in our deck. One in our hand, and one is prized, it seems. So let's discard this energy. Let's also discard... Um, maybe another energy. Let's go for another energy. And that's it. I don't think we need to discard anything else. I'm probably going to try to get this Bronzor in my hand, thin out my deck. I think I should do that. So we're going to accelerate onto the Registeel. And then get rid of those item cards. And thin out my deck a little bit by getting that Bronzor in my hand. And then it's time to attack with our Registeel. Discard one energy to that Lucario. Uh, forbidden Iron Hammer 490. That's a two-hit knockout on this Lucario. Wow, all of a sudden we are looking, pre uh, looking pretty decent. Even though we don't have a backup attacker uh, ready. We can two-hit uh, this Lucario right now. Unless my opponent finds another Fighting Fury Belt. There is a Bursting Blue. Never mind, we won't see a Fighting Fury Belt. And a strong energy is going to hit us for 80. 
And a Pokemon Center Lady. Wow, he actually found a Pokemon Center Lady. That's a little bit annoying. A little bit annoying indeed, but I can promote my Egg Slash now and stall that way. I could for sure do that. First, I'm gonna Metal Links onto the Egg Slash. Kinda wanna start attacking with the Egg Slash. And then I shall, I shall, what shall I do? I could Lysander, Lysander out the other Lucario. I could for sure do that. And put some damage on the other Lucario. And I think uh, I quite like the idea of that. Or I could pick up this Registeel and discard the energies attached to the Registeel. Or I could pick up the Genesect. Which I might actually do. I might uh, pick up the Genesect and just attack the Lucario in the active spot. So I'm gonna AZ. Uh, use my VS Seeker for an AZ. Pick up uh, the Genesect and put it back down again. And I'm gonna attach this Fighting Fury Belt to the Egg Slash and just attack with my Registeel onto the... Well, maybe not. Maybe I'm not gonna attack. I'm just gonna retreat into the Egg Slash and call it a day. So we will have to retreat, uh, discard these uh, three energies. Uh, or maybe I should retreat into the Hoopa and let my opponent get a KO on that Hoopa. Lots of possibilities here. Lots of possibilities indeed. I'm gonna let my opponent get a KO on the Hoopa actually. Giving a, giving a KO here. And end my turn. In the next turn we are going to... Mm, we are going to use a Sycamore. Uh, I could have attacked and let my Registeel get knocked out, but I want to preserve it for now. I don't really mind giving my opponent a KO on the Lucario. Uh, on the Hoopa. Because I think we'll get a KO pretty soon as well. There is a Corina, maybe for another Lucario. Yes, another Lucario hits the bench. He's used quite a lot of uh, Bursting Balloons already, so... He will need to um, he will need to find some puzzles if he wants to get back those bursting balloons and use them again. We really need to find our skyfield though. I'm a bit upset that we haven't found our skyfield to bench another bronze or just yet. There is a red card which I'm fine with. Uh, definitely fine with that red card. Uh, we get an energy which is what I wanted to get, and a, a sacred ash as well which I might actually want to use. Uh, just to fill up my deck a little bit. Fighting Fury Belt on the Lucario in the active spot. And uh, we'll see a KO on the Hoopa for 100 damage. Just enough, or 110, because of the Fighting Fury Belt. Uh, we shall promote We shall promote our Genesect. Attach a Flowstone to the Genesect. And then we shall attack with our Aegis Slash. That is exactly what we are going to do. And now we can actually use the Sycamore and bench another Bronzor. And we shall get back a Bronzong using our Sacred Ash. Uh, the entire line there might as well get back the Toad because we have to. And a Genesect. Maybe I should get back a Shaman instead of the Toad. Let's get back a Shaman. We'll leave the Hoopa and the Toad in uh, the... In a deck, and then we shall Sycamore. Hopefully, we can find that Bronzor for the next turn. There's a Bronzor, a level ball for the Bronzor. Excellent, excellent stuff. That is what I wanted to see. We even get the Bronzor break here. And then it's time to hit for, I believe, 130 damage. So, a 2 hit knockout. Uh, my opponent cannot hit us with this Lucario, cannot hit us with the other Lucario, Lucario either because he has strong energy attached. So he needs to find a Hex Maniac if he wants to do anything against us. I'd say, I'd say we are looking pretty decent right now because of this uh, Egg Slash EX. Uh, we, we actually make my opponent chain Hex Maniacs. Uh, oh, he actually gets uh, the Escape Rope. So let's promote our uh, Genesect EX once more. We can AZ it up. We have a VS Seeker for an AZ. And he promotes the other Lucario. Then we might actually want to go with a VS Seeker for a Lysener and knock out that Lucario on my opponent's bench. 
Then there is a VS Eco from my opponent for a Misty's Determination. He's going to try to find a switch with that Misty's Determination, if I were to guess. Very interesting deck from my opponent, very well put together. It discards a Enhanced Hammer. And what does he find? Does he find a switch? Another strong energy on that Lucario. And a Mega Lucario comes out. So we are definitely gonna license around that Mega Lucario here. We have to do that. And I'm gonna... Uh, might as well retreat right now. We don't need any more energies onto our Aeg slash EX to knock out that Mega Lucario. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to power up the uh, Genesect. Going to retreat the Genesect into the Aeg slash and power up uh, the Genesect. So we can one hit KO a, another Lucario at some point. I think that's our best bet. And we are even going to dig for a Bronzong. There is the Bronzong. Gonna keep the Shaman in hand. You never know, we might need to draw into some cards. And then if my opponent knocks out a Pokemon, we can bench our Shaman. Or if we get the Skyfield from the prizes, because I've got the impression that the Skyfield is prized. Uh, we shall Metal Links onto the Genesect. Look at that. The game is definitely turning out to be in our favor at this point here. Grab a Lysander. Lysander out at Mega Lucario. Be done with it. We don't want to deal with it whatsoever. And take our first two prizes of this game. And that leaves our opponent with no, no attacker ready to attackers. Uh, the other Lucario cannot hit us. Uh, the Lucario without an energy could hit us, but for 30 or actually 50 damage at most, which is not a whole lot. And uh, we will opt to retreat our Aegis Slash if that's the case and attack with our Genesect EX for 180 damage with the Rapid Blaster. All we have to do is uh, accelerate one energy onto the Genesect. That's all we have to do. And uh, we have that energy. Uh, we actually don't have that in our discard pile. Uh, oh, my opponent goes for a Team Fly Grunt. Interesting. Uh, we got the Skyfield from the prizes there, so I'm gonna bench that Skyfield and probably use my Shaman and a pass of the turn. I think our opponent uh, just helped us out to knock out the Lucario. He just helped us out with that Team Flag Grunts, made it so we can knock out the, the Lucario that he promoted. Uh, if we can find a switch from this end. We have one more switch somewhere, so I'm gonna use my N and try to switch here. And there is a switch indeed. Wow, thank you very much, uh, thank you very much, very nice from our opponent to do that for us. And we shall hit for the Rapid Blaster for 180 damage here. Discard those four energies and get a knockout on that Lucario. Amazing stuff. Genesect Toolbox, ladies and gentlemen, Genesect Toolbox right here for you, winning against Lucario, a very nice Lucario deck, I'm, uh, I'm, go I'm going to compliment my opponent on the build, I like his build uh, for sure, he grabs a Corina, he's going to Corina for maybe another Lucario and possibly a Professor's Letter for some energies, there's another Lucario, so he's going to try to switch between Lucarios here. Uh, but we can still power up our Genesect one more time and hit for the Rapid Blaster that way. We also have our Aegis slash EX to use. And he already attached a um, special energy here to this Lucario uh, from the beginning of the game. So he's stuck with that special energy. He grabs a... Oh wow, he grabs a Pokemon Catcher. So he's actually going to try to... Um, Stall here by promoting the Aegis Slash into the active spot and try to deck us out that way. And that is uh, his strategy here for sure. I can see that happen. Uh, how many energies do we have left? We have five in the discard pile, so we should have some more in our deck. I need to keep attaching to the Aegis Slash there in the active spots because we are out of energies. Uh, we don't have any more VS Seekers to pick up uh, the Aegis Slash because our last VS Seeker seems to be prized. Uh, might as well start using some metalings onto our uh, Genesect. And then we'll just have to pause the turn. It's the only thing we can do. Hopefully my opponent cannot discard our energies. 
before we power up the egg slash. So we'll end our turn here, and in the next turn, I'm gonna retreat uh, the egg slash if I can. Yeah, it's my opponent's, basically it's my opponent's only strategy here to uh, get our Aegis Slash stuck in the active spot. And he's chaining Team Flag runs. He can do that a couple more times. He has two more VS Seekers. We get uh, just a Trainer's Mail. Uh, don't tell me we are going to lose this way. I would be quite sad if we did. Because normally we, we run a lot of switching cards, so we should be able to... To, uh, to retreat this Aegis Slash. It just happens to be so that our switching cards um, are either not available to us anymore, like these switches, or the AZ cannot be used because we don't have the last VS Seeker. I'm gonna take a look at my deck. There's two more energies, so we just have enough energies to... Uh, just enough energies there to potentially retreat to the Aegis Slash. If my opponent discards one more energy, we are done for. And there is a Delinquent, he's going to make us discard the Shaman, the Genesect and the Bronzor. Oh my, what an annoying deck that my opponent is playing. And a Coast Crew Smash for 6 cards. Can he find another VS Seeker? We need to find our energies here. One energy. I'm gonna attach it, I have to attach it. This is the turn here. This is the turn. If my opponent cannot find the a way to discard our energy in this turn, then we win the game. If it does, then my opponent wins the game. Uh, we shall Metal Links once more on the uh, Genesect. We need all those energies on our Genesect to knock out uh, the Lucario. And uh, we shall have to end our turn here. Uh, fingers crossed for us. Does he have a VS Seeker for Team Flag Grunt or does he have a hammer? There's a Silent Lab, an energy on the Lucario. Do we see anything else? A Sycamore. Oh boy, so no Team Flag Grunts. Can he find a hammer? He's down to nine cards. I'm biting my nails here. Oh. And he passes the turn. This is it. We won the game. We even top deck the energy. Wow. This is... This was uh, so close. Uh, let's have a look first. Do we have any more energy in our discard pile? We should not. We have all our energy on the field. So I'm gonna retreat into the Genesect. And I'm gonna Rapid Blaster for the knockout on that Lucario. Hit for the full amount of damage possible to knock out this Lucario. 180 damage. Or 220 actually. <laughs> I'm too used to Lucario's hit points. Uh, and there is the VS Seeker that we were looking for. We managed to pull it off just barely. It was looking so good for us. But then I got too cocky. And my opponent actually um, almost managed to win the game by a Lysander stalling. And by using that catcher. It was actually a catcher I believe. It wasn't a Lysander. And dis uh, discarding our energies. What a game, what a game. Amazing. 710 damage dealt versus 350 for my opponent. Uh, Genesect EX MVP versus uh, Lucario EX. Let's see if we can find ourselves another opponent. And hopefully it's gonna be an interesting match just like this one. Alright, our next opponent is going to be Chipza with a colorless and a lightning deck. Shripza. That's his uh, peculiar name. I'm not too sure what kind of Pokemon he will be playing. This might just be a Mega Manectric deck, but I would be quite surprised by that. I'm going to promote my Aegis Slash. We start off with an okay hand. We can Ultra Ball for a Hoopa. Hoopa for a Genesect and a Shaman. And go from there. Uh, what is it that we are facing? Raikou and Raichu. So maybe my opponent isn't playing any DCEs, then this uh, Aegis Slash will not be very useful. This card is a Sycamore, two Sycamores actually goes for a Shaman, which is good for us, because it's an easy knockout for us. Set up for three cards. Can my opponent find an energy attachment? There is the first energy attachment. And another Sycamore, that's three Sycamores in a discard pile. Oh, and he even plays uh, Magnazone. 
as well as the Raichu with the Thunderclap does 50 to each of our opponents, uh, to each of our Pokemon EX, uh, so that's Raichu with the Thunderclap, we will need to deal with it ASAP. As soon as my opponent brings it out, we want to license it out and uh, kill it, KO it, be done with it. Uh, we also see the Circle Circuit Raichu, so lots of different types of Pokemon in my opponent's deck, and there is the Magnemite, as well as a pass of the turn. Uh, we get a Lysander. Lysander might come in handy here. I'm gonna discard two energies and I'm gonna grab my Hoopa. If it is in our deck, there is uh, the Hoopa. We could go with a, a Seismitoad to try to stall. And that's a possibility, but I think I'll just go with my Genesect. And yeah, Genesect is going to be the general purpose attacker here. Maybe the Bronzong Break as well. So Hoopa for at least one Genesect and a Shaman and maybe we'll grab another Genesect because we have the Skyfield there yeah we'll grab another Genesect and bench all of three of these Pokemon first we'll bench the Bronzor and then we'll bench the full R Genesect and then we'll bench the regular R Genesect uh, we'll also use our Skyfield and I might actually license her out that Pikachu or the Magnemite Let's license her out the Magnemite, so we can draw into one more card with our Shaman. And hopefully we get an energy here, and another Bronzor would be fantastic, that would be splendid. There is a Bronzor and an energy, we even get an AZ to pick up the Shaman. So we'll start powering up our uh, full R Genesect, and we shall end our turn here. In the next turn, uh, we'll have to AZ up the Shaman, might have to discard the Hoopa if my opponent counters the Stadium. There is a magne uh, Magneton and an energy on the Magneton to retreat it, as well as a Wally to uh, get out the Magnezone. Look at that. Oh no, wait, see, actually Wally is into the right too. That's a bit surprising. The static Shock fails. My opponent didn't manage to paralyze us. Uh, let's power up our Genesect a little bit more. Then let's put a Fighting Fury Belt onto the Genesect and easy up the Shaman. Hopefully we can find a Floatstone and a Bronzong uh, from the Shaman here. It's going to be a little bit difficult because we still have 36 cards in our deck. There is an Ultra Ball. There is an Ultra Ball. No Floatstone, but we do have that Ultra Ball, which I will use to discard the Registeel as well as uh, the Energy and grab a um, Bronzong. Two Bronzongs in our deck, that's all we need. Three is fantastic, but two is uh, sufficient for us. Uh, we shall Metal Links uh, maybe onto uh, the other uh, Genesect so that we have two attackers possibly ready to go in the next turn. Let's see how many energies in the discard pile. Maybe I should not do that. I'm just gonna Metal Links to the... Well, no, I will do it. I'll Metal Links to the other Genesect. We can always Metal Links to this Genesect in the next turn. Uh, we shall end our turn, so we are a bit slow here, a bit on the slow side, we still haven't attacked. My opponent hasn't attacked either, he did He did go for the uh, Static Shock, but that failed. And there is the Magnazone right now, my opponent could power up this Raikou with a ton of Lightning Energy. VS Seeker for a Sycamore, we won't see a Lysener just yet. Uh, Sycamore for 7 cards, my opponent is down to 24 cards, so we are both uh, doing pretty well on draw support. Bench is another Magnemite as well as a Pikachu. I think my opponent might actually be playing Skyfield as well. Or maybe just Rough Seas. We need to discard two energies to our Genesect if we want to knock out. Actually three energies because of the resistance if we want to knock out that Raikou. That Raikou is a bit of a pain in the ass for us. Definitely a bit of a pain. We can easily knock out the Raichu with our Bronzong Break. There's an energy onto the Raikou. Does my opponent have any other energy? He does not. So we shall evolve into the Bronzong Break here. And put one energy onto uh, the Genesect. Can we knock out this Magnezone? We can knock out that Magnezone. Uh, then let's Battle Compress. Thin out our deck a little bit. Uh, we will compress Hex Maniac, Pokemon Fan Club. We don't need to see it as well as an N, so that we can potentially N ourselves and our opponents. And then it's time to use the Sycamore. We need a switch or a Floatstone, that's all we need. There's a Floatstone and a switch. 
I'm going to opt to go with a switch. I'm going to keep the flow zone in hand. I'm going to switch into the Genesect. Then I'll bench the uh, stadium, the parallel city, so that we can get rid of our Hoopa. And so my opponent needs to get rid of some Pokemon. Uh, we'll get rid of the Hoopa, and my opponent will get rid of the Shaman as well as maybe the other Pikachu. I think he will want to keep the Magnemite, because we are going to knock out his Magnezone. Yes, he gets rid of the other Pikachu, and I think then it's time to knock out the Magnezone after we Metal Links one more time onto... I'm going to go with the Bronzong Break actually here. I'm going to start powering up that Bronzong Break. Spread out my energies a little bit. I wish I hit for the Rapid Blaster for 160, 170 minus 20. Uh, that's 150. That's enough to knock out this Magnezone. Not the easiest of matchups for us because of the resistance, but we can definitely, definitely bypass it using our Metal Links. Try to deal it, deal with it that way. Discard some more energies uh, to our Genesect and power our Genesect up with our Bronzongs once again. We have the Flow Stone to put onto the Genesect, uh, use the Drive Change to get rid of the Fighting Fury Belt. I think my opponent will hit us for 110 damage using the Thunderlands, maybe even more with a... Maybe even more with a Muscle Band or a Fighting Fury Belt. Fighting Fury Belt onto this Raikou would be problematic for us. That would... Uh, that would, require, that would require us to take a two-hit KO on that, onto that Raikou, unless we stack up on Metal Energies on one Genesect EX, but that might not be a very smart idea. Uh, did I discard my AZ? I did discard my AZ. I used it at the beginning of the game. So I'm gonna AZ up that Genesect here. And I think... Um, huh. If only we had one more energy, then we could have used the Bronzong Break to knock out... Uh, the Raikou but it will just have to be the Genesect on the bench so we'll Metal Links onto the Genesect on the bench and discard all energies to that Genesect I'm going to drive change get that Fighting Fury Belt off of this Genesect and put it onto the other Genesect and then I'm gonna pick it up with the AZ that's why AZ is in this deck here AZ up uh, this Genesect and promote the other one, which should once more be a knockout. And I think I'll even bench another Bronzor, just for good measures. Rapid Blaster, discard all energy and hit for 120, just barely enough, or 130 with the Fighting Fury Belt. Take the second prize of the game. It's definitely not over yet. There is the last Bronzong. But now we can start uh, using the Metal Links for the Bronzong Break. And then knock out uh, the Raichu with the Bronzong Break. And even uh, maybe a Magna Magnazone on the bench or the Magneton on the bench. So we are looking pretty decent. My opponent is in a bit of a pickle here. He even promotes the Magneton. If he paralyzes us, we can AZ up the Genesect EX because we have that Via Seeker. And then we shall attack with the Bronzong Break. Hopefully my opponent doesn't concede. I really want to attack with the Bronzong Break here. Magnetic Circuit is going to attach some energies to uh, the Magnezone, it appears. Power that Magnezone up. Maybe it's going to hit for a Thunder Blast. Wow. He's going to hit for a Thunder Blast. I was not expecting that. I'm going to promote my Bronzong Break nonetheless here. And knock out that Raichu on the bench. I'm more scared of the Raichu than I am of this Magnezone. So we shall Metal Links onto the Bronzong Break. And probably pick up the Genesect EX with an AZ. We could use the Floatstone, but I want to keep the Floatstone in hand for the Bronzong Break. However, I can just Drive Change and get that Floatstone off the Genesect in the next turn. But then my opponent might license the Genesect and knock it out. So I think I will go for the AZ. Uh, one last Metal Links is needed here. One last Metal Links uh, with the Bronzong Break. And then we shall uh, Drive Change. Get back that Fighting Fury Belt. Uh, use our AZ. Pick up the 
players are AZ, how oh, there it is. Pick up the Genesect, promote our Bronzong break, and this might actually make my opponent concede. Hopefully he lets us he lets us play it out. We'll bench the full art Genesect, attach a fighting fury belt to it, and we shall hit for the metal rain. Discard one, two, three, four, all energies to this uh, Bronzong break and put 30 on the Raichu on the bench. Another 30 on that Raichu. And another 30 on the Raichu. Uh, just to get that knockout and then we'll put 30 on the Magnazone in the active spot. There it is, the third prize for us. And a Magnazone that has been softened up. I don't know how my opponent is going to come back from this. We have no Pokemon on the bench with any damage on it. All of our Pokemon are damage free. And he doesn't have any backup attackers ready, but he doesn't give up. He keeps on going. Props to my opponent here. Props to him for not conceding. There is another Magnemite. Our Bronzong Break will get hit for 100 damage, but I could actually AZ up the Bronzong Break with my VS Seeker and put it down again. Um, I could actually do that. I feel a bit bad for doing that if I do it. But I might actually want to do that just to deny my opponent a knockout. That is a Thunder Blast for 100 damage. We are going to Metalings first of all. Metalings onto the Genesect. Uh, let's put one energy on there. And let's put another energy on the Genesect. We only need three energy on it. There's no need to put more on the, onto the Genesect. And then I'm gonna attach one energy to a Bronzong on the bench, which I am going to evolve into the Bronzong Break by picking the Bronzong Break up from the active spot with my AZ. So we'll grab the AZ. Three AZs, one after another. That is pretty ridiculous. And that's pretty ridiculous if I do say so myself. Poor opponent. I feel for my opponent. We denied him another prize. And there is a concede. So yeah, there it is. That was the last straw for my opponent. His bucket, his bucket was full. The last, the last droplet in his bucket. Well, I think, uh, I think I'm gonna call it here for today. We had a pretty close matchup in the first match, showcasing all of the different Pokemon except for the Toad. I do want to stress that the Toad is pretty important in this deck here. Uh, it has clutched me uh, quite a lot of games uh, during testing uh, against Garchomp and even against Night March. Uh, so that's why the Toad is in this deck. We didn't run into those matchups here, so that's why he, you didn't see him in action. 400 damage dealt versus 310 for my opponent. Genesect EX MVP versus Magnezone which is quite a surprise. I hope you enjoyed this video, leave a like if you did and subscribe to my channel for more Meta Monday episodes. I hope you have a truly carptastic day and I will see you next time.